thrown to the back of my car, you guys would think I was crazy. You guys would probably fight back. There would be some people trying to haul me off. Because I do not represent anything greater than myself. But if I have a badge on, if I am representing the law as a police officer, things, dynamics change. I now have more authority. As Jennifer and Jonathan, Jonathan are representing Jesus, there comes an authority in their life and in part, and in turn, there comes a fruitfulness and a blessing that the world will have to look at and recognize as different. As they enter into their marriage, they're going to be glorifying Jesus. People are going to be able to see the effects of that. They're going to be able to uh, see their life, and it's going to be a testimony to who God is. And I want Jennifer and Jonathan to know, and they can preach the sermon back to me. But as long as Jesus is the center of their marriage, as long as Jesus is the center of your marriage, you have nothing to worry about. As long as God is, you know, the forefront of your marriage, as long as your family and your household revolves around God and what he can do, you have nothing to worry about in a world that is unstable, in a world that is uh, filled with rejection and betrayal, as long as you put God in the center of your marriage, you're going to be okay. I'm not saying that you're not going to have any hard times. I'm not saying that there's never going to be an argument. There's probably going to be plenty of those. But as long as Jesus Christ is the center, as long as you are honoring God with your marriage, there will be a blessing and a fruitfulness that comes into play there. I want to shift gears for a moment. Maybe you're here this evening and you're listening and you hear, obviously this is a wedding we started off with a song service, a little bit different kind of a wedding, but we started off glorifying God and maybe you're here this evening and you would say, you know what, I've been searching, I've been looking, maybe I've even been looking for love, I've been looking for relationships or whatever it may be. And there seems to be a void. There seems to be an emptiness with inside of my life. The reason why Jennifer and Jonathan want to have this style or this type of wedding, yes, no doubt they want to get married. They want to have a good time. This is a beautiful venue. But also they want to personally declare to you that Jesus Christ is alive today. As he did a miracle in their life, he can do a miracle in your life. As he worked out salvation for them, as he provided purpose and fulfillment for them, he can do the same for you. He can come into your life and fill the void. He can bring happiness and peace. And that's what they want to communicate with their marriage. They want to start off representing Jesus, representing God and saying, you know what? This is all because of Jesus that we're getting married. And you can have a part in that. You can play a part in that. And so we're going to do one last thing this afternoon. If everybody, just out of respect for Jennifer and Jonathan, if we can bow our heads and close our eyes. Maybe you are here. Nobody is looking around. Maybe you are here. And you would say, you know what? There's something missing in my life. I've searched to and fro. I've tried all kinds of different relationships. I've done all kinds of things and there seems to be a lacking of fulfillment. Something is missing. And you would say, you know what, I, I need to give this Jesus a try. I've watched Jonathan and I've watched his life and he's different. Or maybe I've watched Jennifer and I've seen notably she's changed. There's a difference within her demeanor. There's a difference within her life. And that's, you would say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give Jesus a try this evening. If that's you, just signify that by slipping up your hand. Anybody in this venue, we can say a quick prayer. God's moving. Okay, praise God. Let's uh, change the order of this service. You guys can lift up your heads. We have a special song from uh, Taylor uh, this evening, so let's give her a round of applause.
and come forward. As I read scripture from the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians, I want you both to play, pay very close attention to the words stated here. They are the words from God's word that the Holy Spirit will honor as we stand in faith. The world has this idea of marriage that it's simply a legal contract. It's definitely a legal contract. We don't want to make light of that. But at the same time, it's a spiritual contract. When the words of faith are spoken according to the word of God between two born again believers, the power of God goes into operation. There is an actual miracle that takes place when the faith of these two individuals is released in God's power. God honors their faith and brings them together in marriage. With these thoughts in mind, I want you to listen very carefully. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 through 33. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be... And their own to their own husbands and everything husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle 
or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife also loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. To the bride and to the groom. Now upon public profession of your faith, you have made known to all men that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is your Lord and Savior. I make this announcement before this congregation and these witnesses. When two people join themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, according to God's own words and God's own statement, they stand cleansed, as clean before God, as Adam and Eve were in the garden before they sinned. This is not just forgiveness of sin. The Bible says that any man who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. I want you to understand that if you rightly discern the body of Christ, then you rightly discern the miracle that takes place in marriage. Your spirits will be joined together and you will become one. You will not uh, be one just in the eyes of the law. There's something much more powerful that happens. The very creative power of God will join you together, the same power that joined Jesus. When you made him your Lord, uh, you will join, uh, will join you together. Don't ever tamper with that union. The love of God doesn't say, I love you, but do you really love me? The love of God says very simply, I love you. That's all it ever says. Don't ever tamper with that miracle. Don't ever let the sun go down on your wrath. Something holy, something beyond reproach will take place by the Spirit of God inside your soul, and it is a precious thing. Now, to the congregation, that's those who are gathered here today. In the eyes of Almighty God, these two people, Jonathan and Jennifer, are washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They have prayed, and before the Lord God himself, they believe with all their hearts that this is the perfect will of God for them to be joined together in spirit. They have made their decision. So from now until the end of this age, I charge you that you do everything in your power to see that this union remains solid, strong, happy, and prosperous. Woe to any person who would tamper with it and cause it to be anything other than prosperous in the eyes of God. This is a sacred thing, and it's of God. Now for the vows. To Jonathan, the groom. Do you take Jennifer Ray Kidd as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loves the church, to protect her, care for her for the rest of your lives? I do. Then repeat yeah. after me with this profession of your faith. I, Jonathan Mark Bollinger, according to the Word of God, leave my father and my mother and join myself to you to be a husband to you for better or worse, for richer or poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. From this moment forward, we shall be one. Now to Jennifer the Bride. Jennifer Raykin, do you take Jonathan Mark Bollinger as your husband, submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord, showing reverence to him as head of this union for the rest of your lives? I do. Then repeat after me. <laughs> I, Jennifer Raykin. I, Jennifer Ray Kidd, according to the word of God, according to the word of God, submit myself to you, submit myself to you, to be a wife to you, to be a wife to you, for better or worse, for better or for worse, for richer or poor, for richer or poor, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, 
to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish till death do us part. Till death do us part. From this moment forward, from this moment forward, we shall be one. We shall be one. Just <laughs> yet, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, the rings, you guys have the rings prepared? Okay. So take your rings, take hers. Take hers. Okay. A ring is a very special thing, a token of your faith and of your love. This ring is made out of precious metal. It is a never ending circle which indicates the continuing love of God, the love that never fails never presents itself haughty nor puffed up. The love of God and the faith of God is what causes his power to move in your lives. I want you to excuse me, wear these rings as a continual reminder of your faith, a continual reminder of your confession of faith you have made to each other and to God. The word of God says, above all, take the shield of faith, whereas ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Listen closely. If anyone can break up this union, it would be Satan. So give him no place. This is forever. When you look at your ring, remember that. So to Jonathan, the groom, take this ring. Place it on her finger. And as you do so, repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wet. It is a token of my love for you. And a token of my faith. That I release now. In the name of Jesus. Now for the bride, you have the groom's ring. Very good. A ring can mean two different things. It can be a never-ending sign of love, or it can be a shackle. I'm going to charge you with a memory you should always remember. The woman stands by your side, not at your feet. You have a responsibility of being, of being the head of this union. You have a spiritual responsibility. I want you to wear your ring in the remembrance that Jennifer is your helpmate. It must never be a shackle of dominance, but always a reminder of faith and love. To the bride, Jennifer. I want you to place this ring on his finger with these things in mind. There is no place in the word of God that gives people the right to dominate one another. Your vows you have stated, in your vows you have stated that you submit to one another and the responsibilities of this life, expecting God and this power to always make a difference. Repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. I give it as a token of my faith. I give it as a token of my faith. I believe with all my heart. I believe with all my heart. This is forever. This is forever. It is my love. It is my love. And my faith. And my faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want to read just a quick excerpt out of Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter fourteen or thirteen, excuse me, verse four through eight. Love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, love does not boast, love is not proud, love does not behave rudely, nor is self-seeking. It is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. We're going to pray for this couple, if you can... Stretch your hands forth as we pray. Let's pray and believe God. Father God, Lord Jesus, I pray for the sin of God that you have moved out of your hands. Father God, I pray for your covering your hands. Of your righteous name, God, I pray for the sin of God that you have moved out of your hands. God, I pray for the sin of God that you have moved out of your hands. God, I pray for the sin of God that you have moved out of your hands. God, I pray for the sin of God that you have moved out of your hands. God, I pray for the sin of God that you have moved out of your hands. God, I pray for the sin of God that you have moved out of your hands. As a representative of Jesus Christ before Almighty God, in the name of the Father of, and of the Son, Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I now pronounce you husband and wife, you may kiss the bride. read a blessing over this couple uh, before they march down the aisle out of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall you be. Uh, blessed shall be your basket and uh, what you store. 
Blessed shall, be, uh, shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated but before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and all to what you shall set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he has sworn to you, if you keep his commandments, the commandments of the Lord your God, and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by his name, by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods, and the fruit of your body, and the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, and the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give you rain to your land in its season, and bless you in all the work of your hand. You <laughs> shall lend to many nations, but you shall never borrow. Last verse. Calm down here. Verse 13. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. I now pronounce to the congregation Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Mark Bollinger. Yeah.